What's up my bro, Tundrum here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you my $75 Azusa Lost But Seeking budget EDH Turbo Ramp deck. Now this deck, it's very fun to play, like very fun, it's quite powerful, around, I'd say around a 7, 7.5 in the power level, and it only costs $75, it's a very fun budget deck, and yeah, just great to play. So, a while ago I did a list on Azusa, I think it was about two years back. Uh, this list was quite good, but the problem was it was very expensive, and I was also still quite new to the deck at that point, and there were definitely some changes I could make. And I've also had a few requests to make a budget version, so I thought that's a great idea, so I'll make this list here. Now, this deck, I think it's just as fun, if not better to play than the actual list, and very nearly as powerful. So, without further ado, let's get into the list by looking at the commander. Azusa, Lost But Seeking. She's 2 and a green for a 1-2 legendary creature human monk. And she reads, you may play 2 additional lands on each of your turns. That's it. She used to be very expensive, but she's had 2 reprints. One relatively recently, and one just in the core set 2021. So she's plummeted down to just over $5 a piece. So she is a very nice card to pick up now. She's a commander staple. She is very solid. She's actually quite good as a commander, because you play let's say a turn 1 ramp, or even just play her on turn 3, then you play 2 more lands, then you can often play another ramp piece with her, and then bam, by turn 4, you can often have 8, 9, 10 mana. Um, in my old deck, if you got certain um, situations, she could let you get 13, 14 mana on the first few turns of the game. She's very powerful. Um, what a deck often does is it ramps, it plays because of the, a lot of the way the ramp works, it comes in untapped, then play another ramp piece, then play another ramp piece, and have very explosive turns early in the game to ramp us into our big game-winning bombs. So, this video is going to be split into three sections. The ramp section, the top end slash bomb section, and the utility and card draw section. I don't really need to add a mana base to this just because it's mono green. So, without further ado, let's get into the list. Section 1, ramp. First up, we're running Elvish Mystic. Lanner Elves, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Moss Diamond. Lanner Elves and Elvish Mystic, very good turn 1 ramp pieces. Ramp us into Azusa on turn 2, um, which she can then play more stuff and ramp us more and let us get insane things as early as turn 3. Uh, just very nice ramp card. It is vulnerable to removal, but I think they're worth the include. Then we've got Soul Ring, EDH Staple, very good in this deck. 1 mana, taps for 2, have to be running it. Arcane Signet. Now this may only tap for one colour in our deck, but still, a two mana mana rock that can immediately tap for a green is still a very, very good card. It is definitely worth including. And then we also have Moss Diamond, which in this deck is essentially Arcane Signet, but it enters tapped. All pretty solid cards. Next up we have Nature's Law, Badoka Gardener, Wolf Willow Haven, Explore, and Nissa's Pilgrimage. Nature's Law, solid little card, just like a Rampant Growth, except the land comes in untapped. Nice card to play on turn 2. Essentially better than like Arcane Signet and stuff, just because lands are much harder to deal with than an artifact. We then have Padoka Gardener, nice little 2 mana 2-1. Two, then you can tap it to put a land from your hand onto the battlefield, which is also a pretty nice ramp. We may often be running out of lands in our hand with this. There's a, we do run quite a few more lands above average, I think it's just like 42, I think. And um, so we may sometimes run out of lands in our hand with this and Azusa. But as well as this extra ramp, it then says when we do that, if we control 10 or more lands, flip it, and then it flips into a free free that we can pay 6 and tap it to create an XX elemental where X is the number of lands we control. Later in the game, we can be making 10 10s, 12 12s, even 15 15s every turn with this. So it is an absolute bomb and worth the include. Then we have Wolf Willow's Haven, nice little enchantment we can play, uh, ramps the land so it produces 2 mana rather than 1, and later on we can sacrifice it to make a 2 2 wolf, which can sometimes come in handy. Explore draws us a card, which is really nice later in the game, because we often have so much mana, and we like play a ramp, ramp card, ramp card, and we just have so much mana, we actually want to be drawing quite a few cards, so Explore helps us just filter through our deck quickly, as well as letting us play an additional land. Um, so it's a nice little ramp card, and yeah, solid card. And then we have Nissa's Pilgrimage. Free mana, searches for two basic forests, puts one into our hand, and other into the play, into play tapped. But if we have Spell Mastery, which means if we have two or more instant or sorcery cards in our graveyard, 
it gets three of those lands instead, so two into hand and one onto play tapped. So this is essentially just a strictly better Cultivate or Kadama's Reach in our deck, just because we're monocolored, and yeah, solid card. Next up we have Corsa of Crufix, Cultivate, Unstable Obelisk, Search for Tomorrow, and Lanoa Tribe. Corsa of Crufix, definitely worth the include in this deck. It's so good with Azusa, because Azusa lets us play three lands a turn. Being able to play lands off the top of our deck can get us like two free extra cards every turn. Land, 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 so it's very solid. It also gains us quite a bit of life and is a good blocker. Very, very powerful card. Cultivate ramps us a turn and gets us more lands into our hand to make sure we're hitting all our land drops off Azusa. Unstable Obelisk, very nice card. This card sees almost no play, but in monocolor decks, it's very good. Free mana, ra free mana for a mana rock that just taps for one mana. It's all right, but there are definitely better things. But later in the game, we can pay seven, tap, and sacrifice it, which is not a hard cost in this deck. That's easily achievable by turn four in this deck. Uh, sometimes even turn three. And it destroys target permanence. Green, green suffers from a lot of not enough removal. So this can really help fix that problem. Deal with any big threats later on. Offers a lot of value. Good early game, good late game. Solid card. Then we have Search for Tomorrow. Free mana searches for a basic and puts it into play untapped. But it also is suspend one... Suspend so 2, sorry, for 1 green mana. So you can play this turn 1, and then turn 3, we'll be getting an extra land. So the little ramp card. And then Lanua Tribe. Lanua Tribe is one of the best cards in this deck. It's a free, free mana, free, free, and we can tap it to add free green. So powerful. Dropping this in the first few turns is game-changing. Sometimes we'll even drop this over a Zeusa on turn 3 because it ramps us, like, doubles our mana, essentially. Like, our ideal curve, well, not an ideal curve, but, like, let's say you have a La Lana Elf turn 1 into Lanoa Tribe, then turn 3 you'll end up having 7 mana. Very solid. Next up we're running Worn Power Stone, Elvish Visionary, Visionary Kadama's Reach, Solemn Sim, and Rishka, they're all very good cards. Worn Power Stone, free mana, artifact, enters tap, but taps for two. Nice ramp card. Elvish Visionary, very solid in our deck. Free mana, 2-2, two, two. when it enters the battlefield, we get a draw card. Replacing itself is very essential in this deck, considering we run out of cards quickly with playing all these lands out of hand. And it also ramps us a turn by tapping for a green. Solid card. We then have Kadama's Reach. Free mana searches for a basic, puts it into play tapped, another into our hand. Solid card. Rushkar, Pima Renegade. Uh, he's a very nice card. He's free mana 2-2. Two, two. When he enters, put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to two target creatures, and each of those creatures now tap for green. So he'll normally essentially be a free free that taps for green, and he also puts 1-1 one, one counter on something else, like a Zeusa, for example, and then she also taps this for a green. So he can often ramp us two turns, not, which is very nice. And then we have Solemn Sim. Solemn Sim, solid auto include in most DDH decks, very good in ours, um, ramps us a turn, and draws a card when it dies, so it replaces itself and is a nice little ramp piece. Solid card. Next up we're running Leyline of Abundance, Fran Dynamo, Nyssa, Nyssa's Renewal, and Elvish Aberration. Leyline of Abundance, so strong if we start the game with it. It turns all of our creatures that tap for green, give them extra mana. And on top of this, we can pay 8 mana to put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature we control. Great mana sync late game, ramps us tons, solid card. Fran Dynamo, 4 mana, taps for free, just nice ramp card. Nissa who shakes the world. She's probably one of the strongest cards in our deck. She doubles all our land's mana, which is insane. It lets us have like 10, 11... 12, possibly even more mana than turn after we play her. She only costs 5 mana, so we can often bring her out as early as turn 3, almost always by turn 4, and she makes a free free every turn, and if we happen to ultimate her, we kind of just win the game. We have near infinite mana if we do that. Very insane. She's definitely worth the include. And then we have Nissa's Renewal. It's a solid card, 6 mana, gets us free basics out of our deck. And also keep in mind, every land we play, as we get more and more lands in the field, the amount of lands we're going to be playing, it actually fins out our deck a significant amount. So this is really nice, helps fin out our deck, gets us free basic lands into play, and gains us 7 life, so it refreshes our life total back up if we're starting to get low. 
And then Elvis Aberration. Elvis Aberration's not insane. It could have maybe went in the top end section, but I think it is worth the include. 6 mana, 4, 5, so it's a solid body, can block most things, get him for a bit of damage. It taps for 3 mana, so it's a nice little ramp there. And we can basic forest cycle it for 2. So, as well as coming in on turn 6 and giving us a massive mana boost, also early in the game, if we happen to run over lands in hand, we can essentially pay 2 to get another land, and then we'll normally be able to put it into play. So earlier on, it can also almost as if be a mana rock. Solid card. That's the end of that section. Now we're on to section 2. The bombs and top end. First up, we have Scavenging Ooze, Garrick's Pack Leader, Bailoff Woodcrasher, Rampaging Bailoffs, and Ant Queen. Scavenging Ooze is so good in this deck, considering all our lands are green. And in Commander, there will often be so many things in the graveyard. Most of the time, this is a 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, that says 1 mana, you gain 1 life and put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. It's so powerful. Um, yeah, it just becomes massive, gains us all our life back. Very powerful card. Garrick's Pack Leader, nice body, draws us lots of cards, helps us keep playing creature after creature, pretty good card. Bailoff Woodcrasher, now Landfall is very good in this deck, I'm not running too too much of it, but Bailoff Woodcrasher is one of the better but Landfall payoffs, 6 mana 4-4, four, four, but whenever we play a land, it gets 4-4 four, four until end of turn and gains Trample. So we play this, the next turn we play 3 lands off Azusa, and then we happen to get, let's say, another ramp, it's become a 20-20 Trample. This might not always happen, but even if we just pump it up like this once, it is still very strong. And then we have Rampaging Bailoffs, an even better land for payoff. 6 minus 6, 6 Trample, and whenever we pay, play our land, we get to create a 4-4. Four, four. This is really good. Every turn, land, land, land. Bam, you're just getting so many bodies off this. It just Even if it's just making getting one land and play a turn, it's still an absolutely massive threat that overwhelms your enemies. Then we have Ant Queen, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, and we can pay 2 mana to create a 1-1. One, one. This is very solid. Bring it in. Every turn, any excess mana, make turns into 1-1s. One, we'll make sure we always have chump blockers for any massive creatures your enemies have, and we'll often build this up into a huge board and overwhelm our enemies. Next up, we have Ancient Acidic Slime, sorry, Sage of Ancient Law, Primordial Sage, Gaia's Revenge, and Howl of the Night Pack. Acidic Slime, solid card. 5 mana 2-2 two, two death touch, so it blocks most things, kills them off. And when it enters, we get a destroy, target artifact, enchantment to land. Destroys any threat, solid card. Sage of Ancient Lore. I'm not actually showing the other side of this here, sorry, but it's a 6 mana star star, creature, human, werewolf. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, so it's nice, it replaces itself. Then its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. So it may not be too big, considering we play everything. But then if no one happens to cast any spells, it transforms into this massive Vigilance Trample Werewolf that says its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in all players' hands. So if it does happen to transform, it will normally turn into a 15, 15, 20, 20, possibly even bigger if the other players have cards in hands. And it replaces itself. Nice little threat. Next up, we have Primordial Sage. 6 mana, 4, 5. But whenever we play a creature, we draw a card. Cards like this, very good in our deck. Make sure we have constant supply of creatures coming in. And it's also a nice beater. Solid card. Guy's Revenge, 7 mana, massive body. It's pretty much unstoppable. Just charges in for 8 damage every turn. Uh, probably worth the include. Just a nice, aggressive threat to keep pressure on opponents. And then we have Howl of the Night Pack. This card's very good in our deck. 7 mana, and it creates a 2-2 two -two wolf for each forest we control. So normally, when we'll play this, we'll just say we play it as early as possible. We'll probably have around about six forests then, because we would have probably had a ramp card or two. Uh, even seven mana for six two two wolves is very solid. But if we happen to have more be playing this late game, boy, it can become 15, 14, 10, maybe even 20 two two wolves, which is a massive threat that will just destroy your opponents within a few turns. Very solid card. Next up, we have Chameleon Colossus, Primal Command, Yorvo, Turn Timber Basilisk, and Wolf Briar Elemental. Turn Timber, Timber Basilisk. This doesn't look good on the surface. It's a 3 mana 2 1 Death Touch, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, target creatures forced to block it. It's not the best, but if we have Azusa, we can then go play free lands, force free things to block it. 
and then we'll be able to kill at least two of them, if not more. Three mana thing that can kill two things on the next turn, um, is very solid, it is worth the include. Uh, in green, we'll very rarely be achieving any removal anywhere near that rate, so I do think it is worth the include. Then we have Yorvo, three mana creature, um, legendary creature. He enters with four 1-1 one -one counters, and whenever we play another creature, he gets an extra 1-1 one -one counter. Then if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo, which will often be, he gets another 1-1 one -one counter. So he can quickly become turned from a big threat to a titanic threat. He's a pretty solid card and a nice body that can just smash him for lots of damage. Then we have Wolfbriar Elemental. It's a 4 mana 4-4, four, four, and then it has multi-kicker for 1. This is when things get fun. Each time we kick it, we get a 2-2 two, two wolf. So this is very similar to how the Night Pack. We kick it 5-6 times. Bam, we've just got 20 power on the board for 10 mana. Very solid card, very nice mana sink. Mana sinks in this deck, so strong because we have so much mana. Very nice. Then we have Chameleon Colossus. Chameleon Colossus is a bomb. 4 mana... 4-4, four, four, protection from black changeling, and so not, it can't be destroyed by a lot of removal, and it can't be blocked by black stuff, which is very nice, and we can pay 4 to double its power and toughness until end of turn, pretty much, so if we have 12 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, 16, 16, 32 damage coming at them, which will almost be a one-shot immediately for a mere 12 mana, this is very easy to achieve, and will yeah, just be an instant killer if it goes unblocked, very nice card. And then we have Primal Command. Primal Command, nice utility card, can gain us life, search for creatures, get rid of threats. Um, it's a pretty solid utility card that is worth the include in the deck. Nice little, one of Green's few cards that can deal with threats and give you a lot of options. It's more like the type of thing you'd see in blue, except it wouldn't see any play in blue because it would be rubbish compared to other things like Cryptic Command. But because it's in green and green doesn't have access to all this stuff, it is a solid card. Next up we have a bunch of Eldrazi, Breaker of Armies, Oblivion Sower, Artisan of Kozilek, Ulamog's Crusher, and Soul of Zendikar. Now Breaker of Armies, this is a nice uncommon Eldrazi, 8 mana, 10 8, and all creatures able to block it do so. We can easily bring this out on turn 4 or 5, and then just every turn annihilate our enemies' boards. And if they do happen to kill it, that's still 10 damage divided amongst all their creatures that are blocking, and it makes it so they can't block any of your other creatures. Very solid card, charges through for a lot of damage. Next up we have Oblivion Sower, 6 mana 5 eight. I have a video on how underrated this card is. I think it's very strong. 6 mana 5 eight. when we cast it, so even if it gets countered we still get this effect. Target opponent exiles the top 4 cards of the library, then put any number of land cards that player owns from exile onto the field under your control. Nice card, massive body, can block virtually anything. A decent beater can get him for a bit of damage, and it will often ramp us 1, 2, 3, even 4 lands. And if someone happens to be playing Mill and a graveyard's exiled, this will get us a massive amount of um, lands. Solid card. Next up we have Artisan of Kozilek. 9 mana, 10, 8, 9, Annihilator 2, this, we'd probably already be running this because big creatures that are just, yeah, big creatures that have good abilities normally go into this deck, but when we cast it, we get to resurrect any creature, so this will often be getting us, like, 15 mana worth of stuff for 9 mana, and it's, yeah, it's massive body, gets us lots of value, definitely worth the include. Ulamog's Crusher, not quite so good as Artisan, but it is still a solid card. 8 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, Annihilator 2, demolishes our enemy's boards, but it does attack each turn of Abel. Decent card. And then we have Soul of Zendikar, very nice mana sink. It's a 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, creature with reach, and then we can pay 5 mana to create a free, free beast. Very nice mana sink, we can be getting 1, 2, even 3 beasts every turn off this. Very nice. And then we can also exile it from our graveyard to get an additional free free beast for 5 mana. So this is also quite nice. If it happens to go in your graveyard, you get a nice little bit of value back, and it creates you lots of beasts every turn. Very solid. Next up we have Colonian Twin Grove, Soul of the Harvest, Terrestodon, Avenger of Zendikar, and World Spine Worm. Colonian Twin Grove, very nice. It's a 6 mana star star, and when it enters you get, essentially get a clone of it. But its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control, and you have two of them. So these will often be very big, at least a 6-6, even, maybe even 10-10, 11-11, 12-12. 
two bodies like that for six mana is an amazing rate, and you'll be swinging in every turn, um, and your enemy will really struggle to block these, and essentially be having to just throw creatures in front of them or take a massive hit. Very solid card. Next up we have Soul of the Harvest, 6-6 six six, six Trample, and whenever we get a non-token creature, we get a draw card. This card is nearly worthless, I don't know why, it has like, it's 20 cent, it's been reprinted lots in the Welcome decks, but I reckon it's really underrated, it sees hardly any play, but it gets you so much value, whenever creatures enter draw a card, in this deck we just play creature, creature, it really keeps letting us get fuel, and it's a nice body on its own, very good card. Next up we have Terrestidon. Terrestidon is a 6 mana 9 9, it's a very good green card, and when it ends we get to destroy up to 3 target non-creature permanents, and a controller, it's, their controllers get 3 free elephants in their place. So if we have too many lands, we can get 18 power off this, or we can destroy any massive game-changing artifacts, enchantments, or lands your opponents have, and just turn them into measly free freeze. Very solid, very versatile card that gets you a lot of value. World Spine Worm. World Spine Worm is, is a bit pricey, about 10 bucks right now, I think. Might be a bit less, but it, it's not a cheap card, but it is worth the include. 11 mana, 1515 Trample. When it's put into your graveyard, shuffle it back into our deck. This can be actually be quite significant, surprisingly, you often redraw it. And when it dies, you get free 5-5 five, five Worms. So this is often 6 mana, 11 mana, sorry, for 30-30 power, Trample power. Very nice, that's hard to deal with, you need to deal with it four times essentially to finally eliminate it, or at least twice. Um, very, very, very strong card, definitely worth the include. We can ramp the, into this on turn 5 or 6 easily. Uh, maybe not, yeah we can easily ramp into it on turn 5 or 6. And then we have Avenger of Zendikar, very, very powerful card, 7 mana, um, elemental, and when it enters we get a 0-1 plant for each land we control. This can be pretty nice. Um, it's a nice body on its own, and um, yeah, gets us often six, seven, eight plants. This would probably already be running it, but whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we get to put a one-one counter on each plant we control. This is just perfect in our deck, like absolutely perfect. Gets us so much value on the board, and um. Yeah, so many bodies, because we have so many lands, and then as we're playing one, two, three lands a turn, makes them all bigger, so powerful. If this, we play it, and it stays around to our next turn, you'll then have like 30 power on the board. So powerful, this is probably the best bomb in our deck you can draw. And now we're on to the final section, section three, utility and card draw. Now this section is actually very small, I think I have five cards in it, I might have, I could have probably shuffled it into the other sections. But first up I've got Primal Bellow, one mana instant, target creature gets one one until end of turn for each forest you control. This is a nice little combat trick, can save a massive creature or get through for a massive extra chunk of damage. Life's Legacy, sacks a creature and we get a draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. When we have tons of mana and have multiple bombs anyway, losing one isn't going to matter if we're drawing 10, 12, 15 cards off it. Very, very strong card, refreshes our hand late game and lets us to continue play bombs. Then we have Regrowth, 2 mana returns to take a card from our graveyard to our hand. Nice thing, can resurrect a bomb, solid card. You can maybe run Internal Witness instead of this, as we don't really, the 1 mana discount doesn't matter too much, but so doesn't a 2-1 body, so it's up to you what you prefer. And Eternal Witness is like 4-5 bucks as well, so I think Regrowth is the better include. Then we have Wall of Blossoms, nice little card we can play early on, blocks most early attackers, and it draws us a card when it enters, so we still want, well we don't want to be, but we don't mind drawing it late game as well, because it replaces itself. Very nice, considering card advantage is one of our main problems. And then finally, we have Life Crafter's Bestiary. Free mana artifact, very, very good in our deck. At the beginning of our upkeep, we get a scry one. And whenever we cast a creature spell, we may pay an extra green if we do draw a card. Very nice, makes it so we have a constant flow of creatures, can constantly go creature, 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 and smooth out our draws so we don't draw things we don't like, like extra lands very late game. And yeah, guys, that concludes the main list. So... In the mana base, really just throw in any good green lands you think you have, like Castle Garenbriggs one, Ruins of or not Ruins of Warren Reef, Orin Reef, um, Lanoa, those type of things. And then um, outside of that, I think 
44, yeah, 44 forests is how many I'm running in this. I could have probably maybe went down to 42, but yeah, I'm running 44 forests in the list. Um, that is a lot. The average for a commander deck lands is 37, 38, maybe even 36. But considering all the lands we're going to be spewing out from Azusa, I do think 44, maybe more like 42 actually. But yeah, 44 lands I think is the right number to run. It does let us play more often play all our lands, and it will pay off in the long run, because we do fin out our deck a lot from all our ramp, and with all our card draw, we normally won't struggle too much, and it will allow us to always be playing all our lands. And yeah, that completes the video, guys. Hope you like the list. If you want to see more from me, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and yeah, I hope to see you next time.